Welcome to the Franchise Woman Podcast, where passion and purpose collide, profits are made, and relationships forged. I'm Rebecca Monet, CEO and Chief Scientist at Zoracle Profiles, along with my co-host, community advocate, speaker, author, and entrepreneur, Tracy Kawa. So we have a very special guest today. Um, her name is Charmaine. Charmaine, how do you pronounce your last name? Conahan. Conahan, just like it looks. Charmaine Conahan is the owner, executive director of Always Best Care Senior Services in the Glenview and North Shore, Illinois office. Charmaine is a certified senior advisor. Some of you may know it as a CSA and a certified dementia practitioner. She helps families adjust to the evolving needs of their loved ones. Um, and she and a, a, uh, Always Best Care excel at that. Whether the senior needs a helping hand at home, dementia care, daily wellness checks by phone, or help with finding the right senior community, Always Best Care prides themselves in finding the right pieces to solve each particular puzzle a family is faced with. Helping families of the developmentally and or physically disabled is also something that Charmaine is privileged to do. At Always Best Care, North Shore, Care coordination is all about teamwork, trust, integrity, empathy, and unfailing customer service. Yeah. Wow, uh, Charmaine, thank you for carving out time for us today. We really appreciate it. Oh, of course, it's my pleasure. Yeah, Charmaine, this this area, <clears throat> excuse me, home health care or home care, you've got to have such a passion I would imagine for work like this, you know, it, it's hard work. How did you fall into this industry? Well, um, I didn't even know this industry existed uh, 13 years ago when my husband and I were trying to figure out the next chapter of our lives. Um, his, uh, he was a successful trader at the Chicago Board of Trade and trading went poof um, in the early 2000s, mid 2000s. And we realized that we needed to try something new. Um, we have five children. Uh, I was staying at home raising them. And uh, our youngest was five years old. And uh, my husband uh, talked to a friend of his and said, you know, you should talk to this franchise broker I know. And I said, I'm not getting into a franchise. I don't want to flip burgers. I don't want to, I don't want to own a restaurant. And he said, I think there's a lot more to franchising than restaurants. And I said, okay, fine, you know. Um, and before I knew it, we were looking at different um, franchises. Uh, the, our franchise broker was wonderful. Um, he asked us a lot of questions and really honed in on um, what would make sense for us. And he presented us with three companies and Always Best Care was the one that hit all of our boxes. Um, you know, um, one of the things that we didn't realize we'd gravitate towards was um, something that would help people. Um, I wanted to make, and this sounds so corny, but I wanted to make a living, but also make a difference. Yeah. Um, and we were very involved in our church and this just felt like an extension of kind of a ministry, you know, um, how we could really make a difference for people. So knowing nothing about anything, um, I had graduated, uh, you know, with a degree in communications, not business, um, we made this leap. It was an enormous leap. We took pretty much everything we had and uh, put it into this business. And it was, it was hard. Yeah. Wow. It was hard. yeah. You know, I love this idea of our businesses, our jobs being a mission ground, being a way uh, to bring the love of God to people, to be, you know, servants in many ways. And I'm really delighted that you articulated that. Thank you. Thank you. I, I, but, but putting that to use in the real world was complicated. You know, you yeah. want to help people, but it's a business too. So sometimes those two things kind of collide. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, it, it, like I said, it was, it was very difficult. I worked very long hours. My children did not understand what was happening in our family. All of a sudden, mom was there all the time. Then mom was, you know, wow, absent mentally and physically many times. 
Um, but I figured it out. Um, I had people um, step in and help. Um, a neighbor noticed that I was drowning and she sent her best friend to me who was in the business and she came to work for me and she's still working for me today. Um, so that was cool. Donna, shout out to her. My friend Claire noticed that I didn't know what I was doing accounting wise. She's a CPA. She came to work for me for free. And the three of us crowded into our little home office. And, you know, I just, I wouldn't give up and they wouldn't let me give up. And I, we just kept at it and kept at it. And I, I remember I, waking up one morning and it was a couple years in, mind you. I was like, you know what? I think I might be good at this. Like, you know, you fake it till you make it. And you're going to these networking events and you're trying to, hey, this is what I do. And you look all confident and inside you're quaking, right? Mm -hmm. But after a while, I kind of realized that I knew what I was doing and I loved it. Wow. So you the know? passion grew afterwards. The passion yeah. came the after. passion you... grew. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think I became a junkie. And I think those of us who love home care, we're junkies for that moment when a family member says, I don't know what I would have done without you. Or I I know I'm going to sleep tonight after having this conversation. Oh my God. Thank you. So like the, the just people nice. articulating that you actually help them. I could live on that for a month. I could, I could have, you know, and there's a lot of stuff that happens here. You know, we have caregivers who, yeah. you know, wonderful caregivers. Most of them are awesome, but occasionally you get the person that just doesn't show up to work, you know? And that's hard and it's horrible and it's and it's gut wrenching to all of us here in my office. We care so deeply because that's the culture. I want to surround myself with people that care as much as I do. So when things go wrong, we really have a hard time with that, you know, but then when things go right, we're flying high for the rest of the week. And that's what that's what kind of makes us tick. I, I, love that term. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's, it's so true. I mean, there's this incredible feeling when we know we've made a difference. It's kind of um, one of those ideas of you want to build a business, but you also want to make a difference. So it's kind of a combination of this purpose and profits kind of going together. You want, And then on top of it, you get this psychological feeling of knowing you have impacted a life, you've made a difference and you're uh, appreciated for it. That I would become a junkie to that pretty quickly. So. Yeah. And, you know, the phone rings and people don't, they don't have any idea what they need. Sometimes they, mm -hmm. they know that they need help and they Googled and they saw my reviews, um, you know, pop up or they figured maybe, or maybe they're calling 10 agencies. I just happen to be one of them. I don't know. But I'm the one that usually fields those calls because that's what I love to do. You know, when you when you grow your business and you kind of pick what you're good at, I still like to field those calls. And, you know, someone will call in, as I said, they don't know what they're looking for. They don't know what they need. And if I can educate them on what might make sense for them, even if it's not anything involving my services, I'm OK with that. That feels good to me, you know. Yeah, that's great. You know, along this topic of educating, right, the public, educating individuals who might be shopping around, I think that there might be a lot of confusion around this idea of home health or skilled care versus home care without yes. the health in it. Yes. Can you enlighten us between the difference of those two? Yes, that is actually a trigger for me. Um, I I become so frustrated when um, people come and they don't come to me and they don't realize um, what the difference is between home health and home care. And as the years went by, and you know, I grew my business, I was realizing more and more that we're we're kind of an invisible industry. Um, mm -hmm. to, so to clarify. Home health, a home health agency is usually covered by Medicare. It's a Medicare certified entity. And they have nurses, physical therapists, occupational therapists, speech therapists. They have CNAs who do bath visits. 
they do, and they have social workers. So they they go out after someone is released from a rehab or released from hospital, uh, they visit the patient in their home on a temporary basis. And now with Medicare cuts happened a few years ago, right before the pandemic, which was terrible timing. Wow. Um, it's just, a, it's a couple of weeks, two, three weeks, maybe, you know, mm-hmm. and they come for an hour at a time. Home care is not Medicare certified. It is private pay, or it can be paid for by Medicaid if you if you qualify, or if you're a veteran, um, veterans um, can receive home care as well. Um, but most of our most of our our folks are private pay, and we come out and we stay for several hours at a time. We stay for six hours, eight hours. We can do live in work where we stay with someone for several days in a row. Um, you know we do. We do that all that we can do it 24 seven, which means we have one caregiver come in for four, four days and another caregiver relieves that person for three days and then they rotate. So there's, there's a team. So we can do a few hours all the way up to all the time. And that's home care and it's not home health and it's not home health care. It's home care. And I really, really wish that our terms were a lot different, but that's what we're stuck with. And therefore, people get us confused all the time. Yeah, I'm so glad you're talking about this because um, I've been confused about that personally. And I've been in the franchise space and have several clients, franchisors, that are clients of ours. And I didn't know the difference. I kind of understood the placement component, Mm -hmm. but what you do is more encompassing. Could you describe some of the things if I hired a home care person to come in um, that they would be able to do for someone that was injured or unwell or what would they be doing? So if you've heard um, of a term uh, ADL, activities of daily living, so yeah. we help with activities of daily living. So we can help with bathing and dressing and toileting, or if you have some incontinence, we can help keep you uh, clean. Um, transfers, which means standing up out of your chair safely. Um, ambulating, which means walking safely or using your assistive device like a walker. You know, we can help keep you safe and you know monitor how you're walking. And so, you know, if someone's a fall risk, we can help them. Um, be safe and hopefully not fall, you know. Uh, We also can do uh, light housekeeping, uh, which is a very subjective term, I will tell you that. (laughs) Um, We also can do laundry and meal preparation, um, med reminders. Uh, We remind our our folks who have memory loss that they need to eat, you know, and Mm -hmm. maybe not just cookies, you know. Uh, uh, our older generation, um, they don't like drinking water and chronic dehydration will land you in the hospital and not, and you won't understand how you get there. So there are some very simple things we can do to improve the health of our clients. Um, So those are the things that we do. We also can, you know, run errands and take you to the doctor and um, take you to the movies if you'd like. So companionship, I should really mention companionship because I think that that is an overlooked aspect of what we do. Yeah. We're someone to talk to, you know. To have so. someone someone in the home that cares for you. Um, I was mentioning offline a minute ago that I had a femur break um, a couple of years ago, and I live alone. And I would have loved to have someone that could come in to take care of some of these things, because you're right, just trying to get up on the walker and getting in and out of bed was a major feat right. without some some help, right? Yeah, you know, it's hard when there's a Kleenex box across the room, and you just need a Kleenex, right? That's and you're it. alone. That's you know, it. it's just That's all you need. Or, I know. A meal yeah. Or a meal, we, right? You can do that. Mm-hmm. Sure. I mean, if there was one thing that you wish families would know about home care, mm-hmm. what do you think that would be? Like the most important message. 
the most important message that I would give families is, you know, we can help you with all the things I described. We can help, we can help with the, with the house cleaning. Uh, we can help with the laundry, but as things change, we've got you. Um, I actually had a conversation this morning before I arrived to work. I got a message that one of our live-in clients who was on hospice had a very rough night last night and the caregiver was exhausted and the client kept trying to leave. And her daughter called and said, I don't know what to do. And by the end of the conversation, I said, I've got you. Don't worry about it. We'll, we'll figure this out together. You know, that is what I want families to know. And you, if you have a good agency, who cares? And make sure you have an agency that cares, right? Um, we'll work it through. You know, there are, there are things that pop up out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. um, and we watch for our clients, um, you know, change in condition. You know, we pay attention to the details. Donna will make visits. Um, the lady that joined me in my house 10 years ago, she will make visits and she'll notice that someone's lost weight since the last time she was there. Or she'll notice that their memory loss is just a little bit more acute that day. And, you know, maybe mom has a UTI. You know, we've, we've spotted UTIs. We're not doctors, but we sure know the signs of things, right? So, you know, we're there. You know, when you have a couple, uh, we work for a lot of couples and we have the caregiving spouse and the spouse receiving care. Sometimes they both need care, but that's another conversation. Yeah. Um, but when you have a caregiving spouse and the spouse receiving care, what happens to that spouse who needs the care when the caregiving spouse lands in the hospital? Yeah. Yeah. So I can't tell you how many times we've gotten a frantic phone call from an adult child saying, dad's in the hospital, mom can't be alone. And we hit the phones and we get someone over there. That's right. Wow. And so you have an organization behind you. And that is the benefit of having an agency and an agency with, if you're in a licensing state, a licensed agency that has to follow the rules, that has to do, uh, do the documentation, um, that has a care plan, that has a structure and policies. Um, because a lot of people hire caregivers directly. They pay them under the table often because they don't want to deal with taxes. And that's very frustrating for us. But there are no rules in that scenario. And there's no backup. You know, you have a, you, and I know families around here, a lot of people hire direct caregivers and they have a great experience and God love them if they do. That's great. But if they have an emergency or if that caregiver's mother gets sick across the world or across the country and they're gone, what do you have? You have nothing. Yeah. So my, yeah. I guess my, my message is we've got you. We've got you. That is great. What a great tagline, huh? We got you. I actually wrote that in my in my bio on our new website. <laughs> I love it. We got you. We got you. Yep. What a wonderful feeling for everyone, right? So this, what is happening out in the world in terms of educating people about this difference between home health and home care because it sounds like it's an confusing for everyone and they're making 10,000 calls and not really knowing what they're yeah being. and some is regulated some is not regulated right um, what's happening that we can do a better job educating people it's it's hard I don't know what to say because um you know when someone is coming home from a rehab facility from a nursing care facility um they usually do have social workers who can spend the time with them and, and advise them what home care is and how they can help. And, you know, they have some agencies that are a list. We're on a few lists, you know, that's, that's good. Um, hospitals, there are never ever enough discharge planners. The discharge planners don't talk to the families often enough. They don't educate the families on what they need. Um, so that's frustrating. Um, one thing that, uh, has happened though um, over the course of the pandemic, there has been a spotlight that has shown on our industry uh, a little bit because if you remember back in those days when those nursing homes were red hot with COVID, 
people could not be discharged from the hospital into a rehab facility because it was deadly. It was unsafe. So people were being discharged from the hospital to home. And people started realizing, especially our brethren in the healthcare industry, who kind of, we were like the redheaded stepchild of healthcare. All of a sudden they're looking at us going, oh, oh yeah, you can help us, right? So we were, and and we definitely have gotten some attention and some visibility because of that. Do we need more? Yeah, we need a lot more. We need people to really understand how we can help and what we do. Um, I, I, if I could tell a quick story, when the vaccine was being released, um, if you remember that people were, you know, people were clamoring for this vaccine in December of uh, 2020, right? And uh, the the Department of Public Health in Cook County, where I operate my business, which also has Chicago and Cook County and the northern suburbs, et cetera, um, the Department of Public Health had a webinar and it said on the webinar, um, group one, the first recipients of the vaccine will be nurses, doctors, hospital workers, nursing home uh, workers, and home care, home health agencies and home care. And someone from home care hit their mic and said, could you repeat that? Are you sure? Are we, are we included? And they said, yes, you will be in group one to receive the vaccine. And from that time in late December, all through the month of January, I'm checking with my, you know, my office staff members. Did you hear anything? Did you hear anything out there? Did anyone else get? Ultimately, we realized in late January, they forgot us. They forgot an entire industry wow. to receive the vaccine. Oh my goodness. And so I was, I, you know, I get a little bit hot on this subject and I was really, I, I mean, we were all scared back then. And all I wanted was to keep my clients safe. I just had a client pass away because he got COVID from his caregiver. Mm. Now this was a dearly loved, dearly loved client of ours. And he was on hospice, but that's not how he was. He really didn't want to die of COVID. He told us that. And he, and he ended up dying alone of COVID in a facility. And if I could get my clients that vaccine, if I could get my caregivers that vaccine, it just was a ray of hope and they forgot us. So I went home one night and I had a big glass of wine and I I, I, I typed up a very angry, passionate email and I sent it off to all the news outlets in Chicago and one of them called me and wow. interviewed me the next day. And there I found myself in my Be The Change sweatshirt standing down on the sidewalk uh, outside my office in the snow, screaming into the microphone that they'd forgotten us. And <laughs> by God, the Department of Public Health spokesperson, when they put that piece together, she admitted that they'd forgotten us. Wow. This is like... I mean, that just encapsulates everything I've been saying, right? Yes, it does. And the, the term, the redheaded stepchild, having been redheaded... I can relate. I have two redheads. Do you? <laughs> I have some cute grandchildren that are redheaded. There's, and they're just, I love it. But I'm hoping with someone like you, and I hope you continue to advocate and educate, that it'll be more like a Cinderella story. Yeah, right now you're <laughs> in the basement and you're not being paid attention to. Right. You're working your took us off. Um but I hope it's some someday that the, it, you'll get the kind of attention, this industry will get the kind of attention it deserves, especially since we have the baby boomer generation who are taking care of their parents and also the older baby boomer generation getting to a point where they too need exactly this. They don't need to be in a care facility. They need someone to come in and help with these occasional things right. that are going on. Uh, so hopefully that will also ignite a fire under someone's rumpus where, <laughs> <laughs> where and there's a lot of us. This is not a small industry. There are hundreds. I, there are, in my area, there I think there are something like 800 home care agencies in the state of Illinois. And there are a lot of us. We're here. We can help you, you know? Crazy. I, and I think it's that same 
passion that had you sit down that, write that letter. It's that same passion that you use on a daily basis to get your families the help that they need. Oh, you know, this caregiver didn't show up. Okay, we got you. We're here. We're going to go to the ends of the earth to get you what you need to make sure that you are safe and protected. It's that same fire. It comes from that same place of passion. And I will go a step further and say to people, if I can't help you, I will find you someone who can, because we have been experiencing a historic labor shortage, haven't we? Yes. We had a labor shortage before the pandemic. You can imagine what the pandemic did to our source, sources of caregivers. So sometimes I have to, you know, turn clients away, but I have a trusted circle of uh, home care partners. Uh, you know, we we text each other, we call each other. Hey, I can't do these overnights. Do you have someone? Yep, I got them. You know, if I can't help you, I'll find a way to help you. Nice. And that's just how you have to, that's how we made it through the pandemic, honestly. You know? Yeah, yeah you had to be there for each other. It created a, more of a bond between you two. So right. on that topic, Charmaine, um, this shortage of employees, it sounds like you've created the same passion and culture system-wide, I mean, with, within your organization, what are you finding that allows you to attract good caregivers, uh, keep them engaged, excited, feeling wonderful about what they're doing uh, for others? What, what type of person is the ideal caregiver for your company in Chicago? Uh, we look for people who, quite honestly, we look for people who are in it as a career. Um, most of our caregivers have been doing this a long time and they really have a heart for it. And, you know, that's not something that you can find on paper. So um, I have a, I have my HR manager is experienced in um, home care. She has, you know, she's worked for other home care agencies. She knows what she's looking for. My schedulers have to feel good about who they're scheduling. So they meet our candidates um, during the interview process. Um, and we, once they're onboarded, we try to um, instill in them how much we appreciate them. We, we give them, um, we have a little program where they, where they get rewards for just clocking in and out. You know, they get gift cards for, they get, they get, uh, they get told thank you. <laughs> you yeah. Know? yeah. Um, if I see a caregiver come in, I can see the you know, my door's over there and I can see them come in. I'll, I'll jump up and say, hey, I don't think I've met you yet. You know, thank you so much for what you do. We just have a culture of of gratitude. Um, by the same token, we can't let our standards lapse. Um, even though there's a shortage, we have to be sure that we can check references. And if we don't get a good feeling about someone, we don't if we don't feel good about sending someone to a client, then we we just don't hire them. We just have to be sure that we're, you know, sending the people with the right skill sets to the clients that need them. Um, so those people that are on our roster, we do appreciate them. We celebrate their anniversaries. We give them a bonus on their anniversary. Um, we have quarterly caregiver lunches Aww. there. And, and but most importantly, those are things that we do. But the mindset is the caregivers and the clients are equally important. I got a, we, my agency got a bad review a few months ago from an angry client. And in that review, she said, she, she thinks her caregivers are more important than the client. And she was really angry about that. And I thought, I'll take that. Yeah, that's a compliment. <laughs> that's actually a compliment. Like, I'm Fine by sure. me. And maybe you're that's not like, that, maybe I'm not the right agency for you. And that's like putting your gas, ma uh, putting, putting your mask on, right? You're putting your mask on so that you can take care of everybody else. If you're caregivers aren't fine, they're not going to be able to help the client. Exactly. Exactly. You know, these are people, you know? Yeah. I think we all at the core of who we are, um, want to feel significant, want to feel important, want to feel appreciated. appreciated. It sounds like that is exactly what you're doing. And that is, that's fuel, right? That's a form of love. That's fuel for them to then do the same for their clients, right? I'm, I want to do a good job. Um, 
I want to deliver what's being promised because they care about me and are delivering for me. Right. And, and it's not all rainbows and butterflies, believe me. Uh, you know, there are things that go wrong and we're dealing with humans and I could write books about things that have happened. But yes, overall, I do hope that the message that our employees are getting is that they are cared about and appreciated. And I think they do. I do. Yeah. You know, um, I don't know what made this pop into my head, but I've had like a lot of different experiences being on both sides of it, right? When, you know, in my past life with my ex, when we were running our orthodontic practice, but also just me as a human being going in with my child or going in with my pet to a doctor, right? And I always say, well, what would you do if this was your dog? Or or maybe they used to say to me, what, what would you do as far as the teeth go if this was your child? And I don't know why that popped into my head just now, but I guess I'm wondering, do you get a lot of people that say that to you? Because to me, it almost seems like you're probably like that with each and every client of yours, that you want to see the best for them, you know, like you would with your family member. Do you, do you get that a lot? Questions like that? We do get that a lot. And it's, you know, it's funny that you just mentioned this because Right outside my office, right next to our front door is a large uh, professional photograph of my mother and me sitting at her kitchen table and I'm gazing at her and we framed, you know, we have that in a frameless canvas and we hung it. And for years, my mom would toddle upstairs, you know, we're in a second story walk up. I know that's ironic for a senior care agency, but my mom would come by and visit (laughs) And I'd say, you're our mascot, mom. My mom is our mascot. My mom is our standard. If I will send this caregiver to my mother, I will send this caregiver to anyone else's mother. Yes, that was my standard. And my mother passed away suddenly in 2017 and her picture's still on that wall and she is still my mascot and she is still my standard. That's beautiful. I want to cry. Yeah. I'm ready to cry. We, did not even it. It. <laughs> we did not even discuss this in the no. in the in the warm up. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. She's in my brochure. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. 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 yeah I got that's the standard. I'm that has to be chill. the standard, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 And if it isn't, then maybe there's something wrong. So agreed. Maybe somebody's in the wrong field if it's not the standard. Yeah. Right. I, I tell you what, this conversation has been so enlightening and I'm walking away with all kinds of tidbits. I know our listeners are going to be also. Charmaine, um, two things. How do people in the Chicago area that need help uh, reach out to you? And then secondly, how do they learn more about Always Best Care and bringing Always Best Care into wherever they are? So uh, we, of course, have a website and we actually just launched our new website. And my local um, URL is SeniorCareNorthShore.com. Very easy to remember. SeniorCareNorthShore.com. And um, do you want me to, my phone number? I don't. It's up to you, Charmaine. I mean, it sounds sure. like the website will have all of that too. It will. It will. The website should have all of that. And you can call anytime. There's a chat feature. You can um, you can fill out a form or you can simply call. Either one is fine. And you'll get us. Perfect. And if you ask for me, I'm usually here. I love this. All right. To wrap up, Tracy, what are your thoughts? I think you just hit your aha just a second ago. Um <laughs> What are, yeah. what are your final wrap up thoughts? You know, Rebecca, I, I feel like I'm so grateful for knowing the difference now between home health care and home care, because we all do have, you know, aging parents and friends who have aging parents. And to me, the more information I have about health, the better. It's funny because right before, um, I got on this podcast, I actually did like a two minute clip on how to, how to drink 32 ounces of water when you're going for an ultrasound. Right. (laughs) So to me, like I'm always trying to increase my knowledge on 
in health, healthcare, on taking care of myself, on taking care of my family members. So to me, this was like a big, huge thing that was missing. Like, how did I not know that there's a difference between home health care and home care? So I think just that alone really fills in a big gap for me. And I think it would with a lot of our audience members that are listening to this. So thank you for sharing that. It's I tremendous. hope so. And I do also want to mention, um, you had asked Rebecca, um, how others who are not in the Chicago area can find Always Best Care. Always Best Care is a national organization. So you can just go to alwaysbestcare.com and that will bring you to our um, our national site and you can fill in location. And I do want to add, we do have um, we do have offices in the United States, some of which do provide that skilled care. Not to confuse people, but we are mainly a, a home care organization, but we do have some offices that do provide skilled care. Um, and we do, of course, also offer placement services, which means if staying at home is not the best option for you and for some people, community living is much better for them. We do actually help with that service. We will uh, have a conversation with you. Um, we'll figure out the the geographic radius that you'd like to go, your the level of care that you need, your budget, and we will actually schedule tours and go on tours with you and really figure out what the best um, community is for you. And we do that without charging you because we work on a referral basis with the buildings that we tour. So it's a free service and it's it's fantastic. That's amazing. So I wanted to be sure we mentioned that because yeah, home care is not you. always the answer for everyone. Yeah. So again, you got you got them. You you got, got them. them. You yes. got them. If you yes. need if you need home health care, no further. We got you. You need placement. You need you know skill care. Whatever. We 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 got you. Or at least we're going to refer you to yes. folks that can do it. So definitely give Charmaine a call if you need some help and you're in the Chicago uh, area. Um, and to those of you listening in today. Um, to the Franchise Woman podcast where passion and purpose collide. Uh, we'll see you next week for another episode. Thank you again, Charmaine. My pleasure.